Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon video. So today is going to be a little bit of a different video and especially a different deck profile because this is going to be a paper deck profile versus the digital ones that I usually do showing off uh, the uh, deck that I took to the Carta Magica Regional that I participated in on Saturday, July 15th of 2023. So if you couldn't tell already just by the cards laid out, the deck that I ended up taking was Red Hybrids. I did uh, pretty decent and I ended off uh, in that event at 9th place, just bubbling out of top 8, but still in top 16, earning my invite for Nationals uh, this coming season towards the end. So I'm really excited to uh, finally get my invites to be able to go to Nationals again. And uh, I think Nationals is going to be uh, really interesting to see how that's going to play out compared to last year because of the changes on how invites are earned. So uh, in regards to the deck that I took, I took Red Hybrids and uh, I figured in the EX4 meta that this was still going to be a really good deck just because in EX4 nothing really changed. There was a couple of shifts here and there, but it just felt like uh, when I was playing in the event that the amount of different decks that I was seeing was pretty diverse. So I liked the different spread of decks that I was facing off against, even though they were basically the same decks that I was facing off against in BT12. I think just uh, the shift in uh, people's uh, mindsets and perceptions on what the best deck is kind of led it to the spread out to being, well, actually spread out instead of hyper-focused around one, two, or three decks in particular. So the reason why I took Red Hybrids more specifically was because I felt like in BT12, my matchup spread was actually pretty good at being at least 50-50 across the board outside of two really bad matchups. One of them was Machine Dramon, which that one's probably about a 2080. 20 being in my deck's favor and 80 obviously being in Machine Dramon's favor. And then the other bad matchup was at Black War Greymon, where usually that's probably closer to about a 60-40, and it really just depends on how I aggro the opponent and if they're able to get into their big level 6 Digimon and be able to block and wall me out or not. So I did end up teching the deck to be more specific towards the aggressive side, so that way I can make more explosive plays a little bit earlier on. This did lead to my deck being a little bit less diverse and less interesting in terms of the different types of cards that I was playing, but I just felt like I was playing the best of when it comes to red hybrids. So as far as what the deck actually is, starting off with the Digitama, I ran four copies of Yokomon. It's just the best Digitama for the deck. The draw engine that it provides me wanting to already play around with my tamers is really nice, especially since I could trigger it with my other on delete effects to be able to make it even more successful on netting me that card draw. And the fact that it's an on delete effect, it pairs nicely with other on delete effects that I would want to try to use and to be as aggressive with my cards as I possibly can to be able to get it off, making it one of the best card draw engines for the deck. As far as my rookies, I ran four copies of the BT7 Flamon. So the BT7 Flamon is a really good card. Not only is it a decent searcher digging through four cards, even though I can only pick one of them. Most of the time, what I ended up doing with this card is just sitting with him in my raising area. So that way I can start stacking the on delete effects. So when I go into a level four, then I get to try to maximize on the amount of on delete effects that I have. So that way I could try to make as much of an impact with the Digimon that I'm going to be playing with. Then when it comes to the other level threes, I'm going to be running four copies of uh, the BT4 Flamon. This is just a really good searching and digging tool, even though it's not digging as far as the BT7. The fact that I could potentially take two cards is still very valuable at making the deck as consistent as possible. And then the uh, other flame on that I'm going to be running inside of the deck is going to be the brand new BT12 one, just because the discard in draw two still is really good at trying to fill up our trash up for our Takuya, so we could try to line him up as early as we possibly can. Plus, the inheritable of plus 2,000 DP during our turn still is very helpful at making our cards as strong as they possibly can. 
Then the last rookie of the deck is going to be uh, two copies of Bokomon. Bokomon is just, again, another searching or digging tool, very similar to Flamemon, except that this time it's looking through the top five for basically the same type of effect. And if this card sticks on the field long enough, especially if we have a tamer, then we could do a lot of devastating power plays just because of uh, the tempo that he's providing uh, when we digivolve our tamers into a hybrid if he sticks. And uh, he also kind of is like a pseudo magnet towards the opponent's removal because they're going to want to get rid of him before the others because of the threatening ability of his passive for that digivolution, basically making it cheap or free depending on what we're digivolving into. Then when it comes to the level 4s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Agunimon. So the BT12 Agunimon has a nice on-delete effect that usually leads into the combo that we wanted, where we're going to be using Yokomon, BT7 Flamemon, and then end off in Agunimon. So this way, when we swing with Agunimon, we're going to be dealing some pretty decent chip. And when he gets deleted, we not only get to play a Flamemon from our hand for free, we also get to play a Takuya from our hand for free, and then we also get to draw a card if we have a tamer in play and you could order them however you want so it's just a really powerful stack card and tool that we can use while also being a hybrid digivolving on top of our takuya and also digivolving on top of our burnings for some good cycling and draw if we need to then on top of that, uh, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of uh, Burning Greymon. This is a really good mid-level removal card uh, just to try to deal with the opponent's uh, low-level threats that are under 4,000 DP, which does come up quite a lot, especially in specific matchups like uh, Bloom Lord and like in Hunters as well, just to try to clear bodies for basically doing almost nothing while netting us a pretty decent body to start being aggressive with. On top of the fact that he's another hybrid to digivolve on top of our Takuya, and we could cycle on top of uh, level 4s by digivolving him on top of level 4 to make him even more powerful depending on what level 4s we have underneath him as a result. And then the last uh, level 4 of the deck is going to be 4 copies of the brand new Burning Greymon. So the brand new Burning Greymon is probably the MVP of the deck when it comes to aggressive level 4s. Just because if we use him on top of any of our Takuyas, it's going to be a 10,000 DP level 4 Digimon the turn we go into him. And that turns our Takuya's abilities online to make it more aggressive lines of play with to try to close out the game as fast as we possibly can. While also having that same inheritable ability that we saw with the other Flamemon. Uh, from BT12 to try to increase the DP. So he's just a pure DP boosting monster to try to be hyper aggressive with. Then when it comes to the level fives, I'm only going to be running four copies of Aldemon. So Aldemon is a really good card, not only to discard off of our Flamemon, so that way we could try to get him into our trash for our Takuya, but I also found myself digivolving for one into him on top of a level four very often to go up into a Greymon play to try to respond and react to the opponent when I didn't have Takuya set up. So this is just an absolutely insane card at being able to get up into our Emperor while also being a really aggressive card himself because of the amount of DP he can gain himself and even his inheritable ability is super impactful and meaningful, especially for a lot of matchups, turning off security threats from the opponent, allowing us to, again, aggress even easier and safer onto the opponent. Then when it comes to the level 6s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Emperor Greymon. So this is the BT12 version of Emperor Greymon, and this is the backbone card for the deck on how we want to be aggressive and respond to the opponent. If the opponent just has a big Digimon sitting out, most of the time I'm not afraid to just go all the way up into an Emperor Greymon just to delete their Digimon. And the fact that he also natively has security attack plus one and an on delete ability to replay a Takuya just makes him super sticky and super valuable at being, again, hyper aggressive and trying to deal as much damage as you possibly can. Especially uh, since our damage is going to be safe, paired up with the Aldemon, and depending on the Takuya we have underneath, he could deal quite a lot of damage really quickly to try to close out games. 
And then the last level 6 of the deck is going to be two copies of the Old Emperor Greymon. This is a pretty okay card. It's not my favorite card to use, but it's a good alternative win condition. When I break the opponent's security, I have a Takuya set up on the field, go up into this Emperor, and then Blitz for the game. Even if I have to use this as the stack mega, it's still not a bad card to use just because, again, Blitz allows me to attack on the opponent's turn, and if they have any blockers, then he could net me a whole bunch of memory and unsuspend to to make another attack with. So he's just a pretty decent card while also being another card that is searchable inside of the deck versus utilizing a level 7 like Blitz Omni, which is not searchable. There were moments where I wish I did have Blitz Omni, but Blitz Emperor did the job just fine. Then when it comes to the Tamers, I'm going to be running four copies of Takuya. So uh, this is the uh, old BT7 version of Takuya. The warp ability is the most important thing about this card, next to its inheritable ability of just giving plus 2000 and potentially security attack plus. So uh, the security attack plus is really good, especially in the early game if we pair that up uh, with our uh, BT7. Uh, 12 emperor so that way uh, if we set him up like turn one digimon and raising we could raise up a uh, digivolve into a uh, burning emperor and then swing two checks potentially three with the digimon that we just raised making for some really powerful aggressive levels of play then in the mid to late game, the warp ability is super valuable at being able to respond to the opponent. So that way I could go into an instant uh, blitz emperor to try to close out the game or an instant uh removal emperor just to try to deal with problematic threats that I might not be able to deal with otherwise which is why I'm running absolutely zero removal in the deck in terms of the option slots because I don't need the removal if I could kill my opponent fast enough before they could see their threats and problems. Then the other tamer of the deck is going to be four copies of the brand new BT12 Takuya. This is a really fantastic card being the memory setter, so that way we're always guaranteed memory to make our hybrid plays, on top of the fact that he's going to be netting us memory when we're swinging into the opponent's security, and the only thing we're actually afraid of is options being checked in our security, because if the option that's checked removes our Digimon, then we won't gain the memory, but otherwise, any time outside of that, even if our Digimon does get deleted by the security battle, we're still going to be netting the memory off of him to make even more powerful follow-up plays with, so that way we could try to, again, be as aggressive as we possibly can. And speaking of trying to push the aggression, I actually am going to be running four copies of Atomic Inferno. So the reason why I'm running four copies of Atomic Inferno is because against my worst matchups, which is Machine Dramon and Black War Greymon, I need to see this card to try to push the damage as quickly as I possibly can to close out those games before they could start walling me out. So that's why this card is super important and I wanted to see it as often as I possibly can just because even in the not Machine Dramon and not Black War Greymon matchups, I could still push some really powerful levels of aggression. So in the tournament, I literally had a playline where I could have dealt uh, four damage off of using two Atomic Infernos, utilizing the uh, Burning uh, Greymon from BT12 and uh, the Takuya that I just digivolved on top of. So uh, this all already with two uh, um, Atomic Infernos, breaks for four security. I had two Digimon on the field, so out of nowhere, I was positioned to potentially win the game. Unfortunately, in that matchup, I did hit an option uh, first check, but it still was uh, a really powerful playline for me to even think about and be possible because of the amount of Atomic Infernos that I'm running to try to see them as often as I possibly can. And then the last card uh, of the deck and last option is going to be two copies of Gravity Crush. So Gravity Crush just allows me to have some extra instant memory to make some really powerful play lines uh, to try to enhance and extend what I'm possibly able to do. There were plenty of moments where I was choked at one and used Gravity Crush to unchoke me to be able to make my plays possible to end up uh, putting myself into a huge advantageous position even if I passed over the opponent a decent chunk of memory. Most the time they weren't able to fully capitalize on it to uh, make a recovery versus the level of aggression that I was putting out just because of the reactive plays that Gravity Crush enabled me. So that is kind of the deck in a nutshell. I just tried to crank up the aggression to 11 on what uh, Red Hybrids was able to do, doing absolutely nothing unique and nothing no other Red Hybrid deck is doing.
But in terms of what my matchups were for the event, I ended up uh, going 7-1. and one. So I won 7 games and only lost 1 of them. So round 1, I ended up uh, facing off against Blue Flare. So uh, Blue Flare is a pretty interesting matchup. I just knew how to play against Blue Flare, which is basically build up one stack, which I usually tried to have be uh, the Security Tech Emperor, and then just sit on the one stack with a whole bunch of Tamer set up uh, down below. And I knew the opponent really couldn't respond or react to what my one Emperor Greymon was going to be doing because I was still turning a lot of the abilities off for the opponent, and I was just using the one card to be able to chip and aggress. And then when I needed a bigger push, I had all my tamers uh, lined up with probably a nice healthy hand of level fours to be able to start digivolving them into Digimon and to hide a Digimon in raising so that way I could put as much pressure onto the opponent to close out the game the turn that I deemed worthy of. Then when it came to round two, it was against the Bloom Lord. The Bloom Lord player, I believe, kind of bricked, so he wasn't playing the most optimal. But again, I just did try to play to my deck's advantage. I knew that the majority of his cards were less DP than what I was working with. I believe almost none of their level fives are actually 8,000 DP. So I just took advantage of that and I knew how aggressive I could be and what the chances and probabilities were on me hitting a higher threat Digimon in security, which was relatively low. So I just put the pedal to the metal and that's kind of a matchup where I think that the uh, burning Greymon from BT7 is a really good card just because it deals with a lot of their Digimon very nicely and very cleanly, and I actually tried to play a little bit more into the control aspect of what the deck is able to do, because when they went into Quartzbond, I had to use Emperor to get rid of their Quartzbond, and now they have to deal with my Emperor, which they might not have been able to deal with my Emperor, depending on the situation and setup. So that was another pretty uh, good and solid win in that book. Then in round three, I played against uh, Milith or Creepymon Mill. Um, it was basically just that new mill deck that came out of nowhere. I had zero idea it even existed. My opponent was playing cards and I didn't know why he was playing the cards that he was playing or what he was even setting up. All I did was just play my tamers, play my Digimon, turn cards sideways, and then he just lost the game. And I actually had to stop and ask him, hey, what is your deck actually doing? Because I didn't understand what it was doing because I didn't even get that far to see its win con. He did say that the deck does lose to aggro, and I can kind of see that, especially since he was trying to mill me out. And one of my cards, literally the uh, BT7 Takuya, feeds off of having a decent sized trash uh, so that way I could just shove five hybrids underneath to be able to warp into my emperors. So as long as I had Takuya and as long as I had an emperor in my hand and on the field, it really didn't matter what my opponent was doing. He was just bound to lose, especially since uh, I could turn off any security threats if I see an Aldemon anywhere in my trash as well to use with my Takuya. So it was a pretty easy matchup uh, just because the deck wasn't super good against Hyper Aggro. Then going into round four, I ended up losing against Hunters. Basically, he just out-tempoed and outplayed me. Uh, there was nothing I could really do. I tried to control the field the best as I can, but I was just playing a little bit slower than what he was playing. Maybe it was from my hands. Maybe it was from some of my plays and some of my card draws, but he just had some really good solid tempo and he never let go of that tempo once he had it. And fortunately for me, the only loss was to that Hunter's player, and that Hunter's player ended up getting 8th place in the event. Then round 5, I faced off against Black War Greymon. Black War Greymon wasn't that threatening considering he kind of bricked, so I took advantage of the fact that he was playing suboptimally to A, control the field when I could just to keep him off of getting into problematic Digimon, and B, aggressing really hard so that way he didn't have much time to respond to be able to get up into his higher stage Digimon so he wasn't really doing much most of the time. Then when it came to War Greymon that was actually a pretty close game just because round one of that match he actually did pull the nuts and OTK me which was absolutely crazy to see because I knew and I was expecting a raid setup based on me trying to play the cards the way that I did but I wasn't expecting the OTK setup and apparently neither was my opponent. But then going into games two and three, I made the swift return in terms of my aggression level gameplay, and I just out-aggroed and outpaced him. 
Then when it came to round seven, it was another blue flare player. I already knew how to play against blue flare, not only just in practice, but from already playing one in the event. So that wasn't that hard of a matchup. I just punched hard, punched often, and well, closed out the game as quickly as I possibly can. And in round eight, it was against another hunters player. And uh, this time I was the one that had the tempo in advantage and was aggressing more than my opponent. So I just had the better resources at the time and just outplayed him and controlled his field to where he couldn't really do a whole lot. So that was basically my run in a nutshell, landing me ninth place in that event out of 512 players. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.